Um, wow, thank you so much. So, um, thank you for having me here. Uh, first of all, I am not a Django developer. Uh, I have finished the uh, uh, Django Girls tutorial. I have finished. <laughs> I finished the tutorial on the documentation site, and that's it. That's my Django experience. Um, so, so today I'm not going to obviously teach you Django, but I'm going to tell you about PyScript and um, some fun facts about it, and also a little demo to show you how you can use PyScript. So, um, very very exciting stuff, and that is the uh, how you can get the slide. So I always put it there at the beginning and I always spend some time talking about other stuff so people can take pictures of it if they want to find the slides later. Um, also, uh, tag me on Twitter. I love people tagging me, so yay. Um, so how many of you here have heard of PyScript? Yes, woo, we're getting popular. That's great, that's great. A lot of people heard about it right now. I think, um, you know, back a few months ago, there won't be that many hands and people will be like, what is PyScript? And now people know about PyScript. So, um, but before I jump into PyScript, I would introduce myself. I'm Chuck. Right now I work for Alaconda as a developer advocate. So if you have any, um, any questions about uh, data science stuff or PyScript stuff, you can talk to me. Uh, I will try to help you. If I can't, I will find the right person who can help you. So I also involved in a lot of open source projects. I love open source. Uh, that's why I am here in the community. And also contribution is not just code. I also organize a lot of uh, events. So I hope that's also count as contribution as well. Um, and I uh, stream a little bit on Twitch when during the pandemic because I was too bored. So um, what is PyScript? So, um, as a lot of you already heard about it, I'll just quickly go through uh, the checklist so make sure everybody is on the same page. Um, so what is PyScript? Uh, PyScript is a framework. So yesterday I gave a live stream talk about a conference called Pyjamas and people asked me, is that a framework? So I think nowadays we need to be clear what is what, right? So PyScript is a framework. Um, PyScript uh, lets you run Python applications in the browser. So it's the front end stuff, right? It's, it's you know, it's just, just that, you know. Um, and even though it's running on the front end, uh, it's not trying to replace JavaScript, uh, you can use it with JavaScript. Um, and because it's using PyLDI, uh, so PyLDI uh, actually kind of have a lot of uh, APIs that you can convert Python objects to JavaScript objects and vice versa. So because PyScript uses PyLDI, so uh, there's a lot of operations. It's kind of very similar to using uh, JavaScript. Uh, for example, you can uh, create some event listener, or you can have some um, uh, things that you can, um, con you know, uh, have interaction with the DOM and other stuff. And um, uh, PyScript is uh, is capable of doing that because now we can uh, have, uh, you know, the WASM, which is the web assembly. So uh, we can interpret Python into WebAssembly. So, um, so PyScript is actually standing on top uh, of the shoulder of the giant, right? So we have a lot of amazing projects in the WASM and PowDie um, kind of things. Also the uh, MicroPip that is using, uh, we use MicroPip for a lot of things as well. So, so those things empower PyScript. Um, and it makes a lot of pop, uh, popular package available. So. Uh, Lots of computational stuff, the scientific computational stuff like um, scikit-learn, pandas, numpy, those are available. Um, also other like visualization stuff that uh, data scientists love. So this is a very good tool. Um, so um, I think it's easier for me to explain it if I show you an example. So this is uh, how to use PyScript. This is how you use PyScript. Um, yeah, so it's just the script. It's just like JavaScript, right? Just like put it in there, and now you can write Python. <laughs> this is that simple. Um, so this is a hello world example. Um, so it, it just generates this page. I just put it in as an iframe. Um, so uh, it's nothing special, but this is generated from Python. This is why it's a hello world example. Um, there are actually more examples uh, in the official website. Uh, also all around in the internet. So you, if you are interested, you can find more. I also have an example um, later I will show you. So uh, so you see that this, right? Like this, you have to, oh, you have to call it in from the PyScript.net. 
Oh, also, by the way, it's in alpha, so, um, you know, take it with a grain of salt, and, you know, it's not very stable yet, so uh, prepare, be prepared that things may change, and actually you can help the change by um, just giving your feedback and stuff. So, so this is, you call it in, right? Um, but what if I want it to be more stable? I want to, you know, because it's in alpha, things may change. I want it to be stable. Uh, you can self-host it, um, just like other things that you do with JavaScript. So um, I can actually show you in my example how you do that. So um, I've talked a lot about PyScript. Why I'm talking about it? Why like why we care? Because I have other stuff that I could use. I have the HTMX. Someone told me that um, you can do things in the back end. Why do I have to? Um <coughs> Excuse me. So why do I have to do it on the front end? <coughs> Excuse me. Choke on the water. <coughs> because um, sometimes we need to um, do things in the front end uh, like we do all the time. So, I mean, some stuff are computational heavy. If you have a lot of users, um, you can't always do things in the back end because... <coughs> because some um, things um, scale up not as well if you do everything in the back end. Um, also, um, Sometimes, you know, I've, a lot of people tell me that, oh, actually, PyScript is nice because now I can let people try out stuff, right? Um, be, because before, if you want to uh, create a sandbox for uh, people to do it, try some code and stuff, it could become a crypto mining playground for people to run code that may not be something that uh, is what you intended, right? And also, sometimes you just can't do it at the back end because some user, they may have some data that are too sensitive that um, they are not going to submit it through the internet to your back end. You have to do that in the own machine uh, because, you know, it could be some personal data that they should not share with some other people. So it has to be stay in their own machine. So um, before I show you the demo, we'll script. Replace Django? The answer, of course, is no. Uh, so that's actually a clickbait, so that's why you come to the talk. But, um, but yeah, if we um, put this stuff together, we can um, actually make some amazing things if you, we use the PyScript together with Django. So um, here's my examples. I'm going to spend the rest of the time showing you what I've done. I hope uh, you would uh, find some use for this. So uh, all the codes are hosted on GitHub. You can have a look at it. Um, but I'm going to show you what I've done. So now I have a, a Django server running. It's a bit messy here, but I hope you see that um, I'm now running a Django server. So yep, we get all the static file. I'm going to explain to you what happened here. So um, so this is uh, the index.html. So what happened, I will first just show you um, how we build the model. So what this example is doing is actually um, the recommendation thing. So maybe I'll show you this first. So uh, favorite movie, I put Iron Man. Because uh, that's, oh. Typo, typo. OK. So I will have, let's say, five uh, recommendation. I hope you can see it. It's a bit small, but I don't know whether. So it's running, actually. Yeah. So um, I have uh, five movie that was recommended, so I can continue with this, you know. Uh, um, oh, give me more if I like this one, uh, which is, I think it's Batman movie, right? The Dark Knight. Mm, yeah, so I have War Yi now, so it's just go on and on, and I can go from War Yi, what, what are we gonna get? War Yi from some robot things, don't know. So, um, so this is the recommendation engine. So this is actually just run on the front end. So um, I'm going to show you what I've done. Um, 
So you first of all, uh, you need to get the data. So I got the data from this um, land, uh, movie lens data set. So uh, it's all on the readme if you want to see the GitHub repo. So you download the, the CSVs, which um, contain all the ratings from all the movies that they collected. So in there, um, uh, I have uh, do some 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 uh, things. You you can do better than me than this. Like I'm just using some command line to load them into the model. But if you have something more automatic, you can do that. Um, so load the uh, the CSV into the model, and then um, you train the data. So um, I've done this with again a command, very basic. Uh, you can do something more sophisticated than I do because. You are better than me at Django, so you can do this. Um, anyway, what I've done is to uh, use the CSV to uh, create um, two uh, models that I pickled. So there's actually two things here. One is actually just the title and the uh, ID mapping. The other is actually the, um, the actual matrix that I use to uh, get the recommendation uh, to get which movie are closer to which one. So if someone put in a movie name, then I would get recommendation for the closest X movie. So for example, five, I just show you, or 10 or 11. So um, this is how you do it. Um, if you want to know how to create this uh, recommendation engine, actually I'm running a workshop on Saturday, so you can come in, come in and try it yourself. But anyway, so this is just preparing the data for, uh, for use. So after this, the tricky bit is to uh, deploy it to, uh, to a, to, for the user to use, right? So after that, I'll actually dump them, but um, where I dump it, it will be here in the static, oh, no, don't load it, uh, in the static file, because they're too big. So. In a static file, you have these two pickle. Uh, again, you can use other format. Pickle is not the best, but I'm just using it for now. Um, so you put in the static file, and it can be consumed by PyScript. So in here, this is uh, the, the template for the index uh, HTML. So I'm just calling in all this file that I need. So let me explain PyEnv here a little bit. So in PyEnv, um, you have um, you have a, a few files. Excuse, excuse me, one second. <coughs> so um, I host all these uh, files. So I have the Py, uh, Python file. This is uh, where the model sits. And there are also the, um, the the model that I have trained. So they are all like hosted here uh, on the static files. Um, one extra thing that I, because I, I need uh, some Python packages to do this, right? I need the scikit-learn, which is how I deploy the model. And I also need this uh, fussy woozy library. So you see here, there's uh, two things that I've done differently. differently. So here you see that um, in the static uh, here, that actually I, ha I can host a will by myself um, to the uh, environment here. Um, you can do that with most packages, except those that are not purely written in Python, which Scikit-learn is, because Scikit-learn also involves a lot of um, algorithms that are speed up with uh, C code and other things. So um, I have to call it in from PyEnv. Otherwise, you can all host it on the same server if you want to. So you have a closed environment. But unfortunately, Scikit-learn, you can't do it yet. So you have to call it in. Um, so these are the environment that we need to run the, your Python code. So uh, your files, your models, and um, the packages that you use. So you all host it there. And then you have um, your script. So this is just Python script. This is exactly like uh, how I would write a script to deploy this model on, uh, with Python. So here uh, we can see that I have also do something very hacky thing. For example, here in HTML, I um, mean, PyScript right now, uh, you can't write HTML into your, um, your uh, for example, I want to write into the output here. Uh, right now, you can't do it directly because um, the HTML tag will be removed for safety reason. Um, so I'll just do some hacky thing here. I replace some other thing with the uh, bracket so I can create some HTML code. I can put it here. Um, but yeah. Uh, so if you have any suggestions that PyScript should do it, you know, please, there's actually a discussion um, 
uh, thread uh, on GitHub so you can uh, chip in <laughs> if you want to. Um, so this is, the, uh, this is uh, basically you just run the code, you take the, uh, the user input, right, and you, you take it and then you um, run the model and then you, so, so this uh, KNN recommender is the, um, where it happens, so it stays in another Python script that I put it again in a static file. So after that, like you push in the model, you have the, your KNN recommender, and it will just uh, find the top end movies, it will give it back to you, you can just write it back to the, the DOM. This is how I do it here. Um, so uh, this is basically what PyScript uh, looks like. Um, if you want to, again, if you want to uh, know more about it, talk to me. Uh, you can also find this code uh, on GitHub. So here, it's all on here. Um, have a look if you want to. So the link is here. Okay. So there are more examples. Uh, these are more um, visualization focused example here. So um, have a look if you want to. Uh, Q and A time. So um, so far, I've been talking about PyScript, and a lot of people ask a lot of questions. And um, I want to add more to this list. So if you have any any questions, um, please ask me. Then uh, I will put some of them here. So. I will keep us answering some questions. So, first of all, can you put in a, a Python script? Yes, I've just done it in the example, so you can have a look. Um, what is the Python version that we're using? So, um, PyScript is actually using PyODI, like I said. So, whatever PyODI is using right now, the latest, it is the Python version. So, you have to check with PyODI. Um, is there any way that you can pin a Python version? No, not a simple answer to that question yet, so we are still working on that. Um, can you use uh, the, the tag, you know, just like JavaScript, right? Script and then Python. Um, you can't because uh, most browsers are not supporting that yet. Um, so that's why PyScript has to use a uh, custom defined script that is Py-script. Um, so uh, that's what we're doing right now. Again, it's in alpha, so things may change in the future. Um, why don't you, you just use PyODI? Uh, it's like, uh, this analogy is more uh, data science-y, but uh, I would say that it makes using um, Python in the front end much easier, because um, in PyODI, if those of, those of you have tried PyODI, uh, there's a lot of APIs that you have to have some understanding of how um, you know, the front end work, how you can work with uh, JavaScript and all this stuff um, with PyScript. If you just have a simple Python script, you can just run it. Um, it's not a big problem at all, so you can do that. Um, and someone asked me a question, like, can you pin the package version? Uh, right now, there's, again, no easy way to do it, but you can host the wheel yourself, like I did, if you want to. Um, but that only applies to those, that uh, package that's purely written in Python. If it's not, then you may come into a dead end, and you have to see what the maintainers offer you in the future, or you can chip in to help uh, how, you know, we, we should do that. So, um, so that's basically uh, what I'm going to tell you right now today. Um, so if you want to know more, actually there is an event coming up in November, in not too far from here in Lisbon. So uh, the Peter, uh, our uh, CEO, uh, also the, uh, the person who announced PyScript a few months ago, uh, he will be there. So um, you know, go there if you are in Lisbon, and you know you can talk to him and ask him more. So um, also at the end, pajamas con. But I've already talked about it many times. I have stickers, so come to me to get stickers. Um, so I think probably that's it for today. Sorry about the short talk, but um, yeah, uh, talk to me, and I will answer your questions. Thank you.